That way you're not maybe having something that's different or unique and then maybe having an upset stomach. I love that. So I always say if it's boring, it's good this week, right? You want something that you're used to. Um, and Jason, you, you touched on it, but from that training side, guys, your mileage has gone down, and even you're so close to the race, that intensity has also gone down. This week, we get a lot of questions. You know, what should my mileage be? What should I be running the last few days? And it, it is individualized, mm -hmm. but it is less, is actually more in these last two days before the race. So a lot of runners, you know, are doing shakeout runs today or tomorrow. I'm going on a shakeout run with a lot of our coaching lab runners today at five. So those shakeout runs, two to three miles, just to kind of keep your legs moving. If you want to do any speed work, strides are your best friend this time. So strides, you know, 30 to 40 seconds um, at a very fast pace, like an eight out of 10 effort. Just pushing that pace um, so your legs remember, oh yeah, I know what this is. Maybe you can do a mile at marathon pace, just to remember what that, you know, what that nine minutes per mile feels like, but you're not stressing your body at all. You can actually, you move, your more will hurt your race here than help your race. So keep that in mind when it comes to training. Now, Jason, Anything with sleep with the runner right now? What should we focus on sleep? Is, it, is, is the night before really important compared to tonight? How, how should they focus on their sleep? So I mean, I think just having good sleeping patterns is kind of the most important thing day in and day out, uh, making sure you're getting adequate rest. Uh, you know, I think the biggest challenge with sleep might be for the people who are traveling mm, yeah. um, and, <clears throat> and getting to that point where, okay, if you're flying in, it's a long, uh, it's a long flight, trying to give yourself a couple of days. I know that's kind of getting short in time. Uh, but again, if you're trying to get yourself aligned, we can get a good night's sleep the night before. That's super important um, and not having any sort of jet lag uh, if you can help yeah. it. Keep in mind, we thankfully have this race on the end of daylight savings time. So people mm -hmm. do get an extra yeah. hour of sleep on Sunday. So we yeah. change those clocks. Uh, if you have, you know, any, any smartphone or smartwatch, it does change it for you. But manual clocks, you want to change those alarms to wake you up at the proper time come Sunday morning. That extra hour might be helpful. Yeah, I'll also say for people who maybe aren't used to the sounds of the New York mm -hmm. environment and you're staying in a hotel, trying to make sure you get blackout curtains, uh, white noise machine if you can get access to it or an app, um, you know, trying to turn off the blue light stuff, so putting your phone away, really giving yourself as much of a, um, a kind of a calm, peaceful environment to get good sleep as well. I did notice that. So I live in Jersey and I st I'm in a hotel right now and I noticed last night just in, you know, where we're staying here in almost Midtown, the noise, I did notice, I, I lived here for 10 years and now, I, you know, four years I've been in Jersey, I noticed how loud it is. I'm just not used to that. So I could see that definitely for someone who isn't, hasn't experienced that, that could be uh, a disruption to sleep. Yeah, and it's exciting, you know, if, yeah. especially if it's your first marathon, you come from out of town, that excitement is real and it's great. And I think it's just the key, especially the night before, that you de-stress, maybe take a nice bath, shower, whatever, um, you know, something that just kind of keeps you calm and feeling good. Love it. We have some great shout-outs, Jason. Uh, guys, as I said before, if you have any questions for Jason, myself, about your pre-race nutrition or training, put those in the chats. I want to hear from you. Uh, but let's get some shout outs from you guys all over the country and the world. Patricia from Toronto, Ontario, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you are running a Sunday, maybe coming in here tomorrow. If not, thank you for watching. And we also have Trevor from Puerto Rico. I love it. Trevor, thank you so much for, for watching. Um, all right. Uh, so let's go jump into now, Jason, the morning, uh, I'm sorry, the night before. Let's talk about that. What runners should be focused on the night before race as far as what they're eating? Sure. So, yeah, I mean, I think the key things that you want to be thinking about the night before are your carbs, mm -hmm. protein, fluid, electrolytes, really. You know, those are kind of the key things uh, you want to be considering. So, again, for those especially who are carbohydrate loading, you want to be making sure you're getting a decent amount of carbs because, again, that carbs will be going towards replenishing your tank for the next morning, but also be getting depleted overnight as you sleep. So you really don't want to start behind the eight ball in the morning if you under ate carbs the night before. Um, so again, you can choose what you like. It could be pasta, rice, potatoes, whatever it is. Again, you know, if you're doing a carbohydrate living protocol, you might be having a little bit more. Um, you know, really kind of think about taking in more. Um, for other times, it might just be a regular amount. Uh, again, you don't want to do anything new on race day, so you want to roll with something that you've kind of tested and tried that's worked for you for your longer runs. Um, protein, moderate amounts of protein. You don't need to go hog wild, but again, have a nice, you know, regular sized piece of protein, um, you know, palm of your hand, deck of cards type thing, or a little bit bigger if you're a bigger person. Um, you know, and then again, you know, as far as like, like veggies are fine, as long as they feel good in your stomach. Um, and then fluid, make sure you're drinking water even starting the night before, um, and then electrolytes. So again, you know, especially if you know you're a salty sweater, 
getting the electrolytes in could either just be something as simple as adding a little salt to your food. Yeah. Um, it could be ha adding a, a tablet to your water. Um, especially for the heavy, salty sweaters, you do want to try to be proactive in getting those electrolytes and fluid in even the night before um, to kind of top you off as well. And you'll generally know who you are because even by your warm-ups, you're in a puddle of sweat. When your sweat dries, maybe you get streaks in your clothing, crystals on your skin, that sort of thing for a salty sweater. So um, it's worth being on top of things for that as well. I love that. So let's also talk about then the morning of, uh, you know, it's, it's, we wake up four in the morning, <laughs> super yeah. early, even with a time change. What does our breakfast look like the morning of the race? How do we time it? Because sometimes our race starts at noon, but we're getting up at four to catch the ferry. That's kind of a, a different place for us. How do we manage that? Yeah, the, the New York uh, City Marathon is, is a challenging one in that regard because there's such a long time span of, of from wake up to actually starting your race for a lot of people. And so, you know, the easy thing, the good thing is, is a lot of the similar uh, appro approaches apply to what you do the night before, what you do the morning of. So again, it's a carbs, it's a bit of protein, uh, familiar, well-tolerated foods. Um, so again, having a decent breakfast, whether it's, you know, whether you like your oatmeal, whether you want bagel, um, you know, with some eggs, or you can do an oatmeal with some, uh, a little bit of nut butter. Uh, you can do yogurt with a bit of granola. Um, again, it's really kind of what works for you. But again, carbohydrates, moderate amount of protein, nothing crazy. Uh, nothing high, nothing too high in fat and fiber if you are sensitive to it. Mm. So this is the sort of thing where like some people will say, I love a big bowl of oatmeal with like bananas and peanut butter before the race and I feel great. And other people like, if I eat that, I would feel like I have a rock in my gut for like <laughs> half the race. And so, you know, to your point, it's a really big factor to like understand your own personal preferences um, about what you can tolerate eating. Uh, so again, if you have a sensitive stomach, maybe lower fat and fiber foods, something simpler. Um, but if you like that sort of thing and it keeps you feeling fueled, then by, by all means, go for it. So should we be focused on that morning? Like I said, we're going to before 5 a.m. Yeah. and then we're taking the ferry bus. Do we eat our, our full of oatmeal at home or hotel room and then we're eating a snack at the start line? And what does that snack look like? Or do we eat a snack at home and an oatmeal in, in the start village? How do, how do you balance those out? Yeah, I mean, I think a big part of it is going to be based off of what, where you're trying to refuel from. So again, like if maybe you didn't eat a great dinner or you kind of were busy and you didn't have it, then maybe a bigger breakfast would be better. So again, what you're trying to imagine is your body has a gas tank and you want to yeah. fill the gas tank. You don't want to overfill it either and feel like sluggish and heavy, but you also don't want to underfill it. And so a lot of it has to do with what you're eating the days before, the night before, et cetera. So generally I'll tell people, you know, you definitely want to have something in the morning. Um, you know, you can kind of adjust it based off how you're feeling. Um, and then bringing food with you and having it. Because again, it can be a long time. And so what you ate at 5 a.m., if you don't start till 10 or later, that's gone. My, my, my metaphor is even idling cars burn gas. And so it's really important that you bring some snacks with you, whether it's some fruit, whether it's uh, you know, uh, other things to just snack on, bring your water with you, hydration. Um, you really wanna kinda keep that gas tank topped up. Again, you don't necessarily have to have two huge meals but definitely having a meal to top yourself off. It doesn't have to be like as soon as you wake up, maybe it's you get up, get dressed, you know, kind of get ready, do some warm ups and then have it. But you want to have something when you get up and then continue to have little bits um, throughout the morning until the uh, race starts. Is there a uh, time limit that we should stop eating certain foods? You know, my waves at 12, I should generally for, you know, the, obviously everyone's specific and with their own training, but stop eating at 11, an hour before or 30 minutes or, is it so individualized that there's no specific t kind of time frame we can get one to stop eating, stop eating the solids? Yeah, it's a really good question. It is very, it is individual. So some people can eat something 30 or 60 minutes before and just like be like, oh, this is fine. This is easy. So again, I think this is a good place where like if you want to have a nice big bowl of oatmeal, you're going to want to have that earlier to give yourself the time to digest versus maybe simpler carbs, fruit, granola bars, you know, things like that kind of closer at a time bread, bagel, that sort of thing, where you just you can put it in, uh, or a sports drink where you can just put it in and it goes through. Um, so again, I would agree that as you get closer to a wait time, the amount of food you're going to have is going to go down. I'm oh, sorry, the closer you get to race time, the amount of food you're going to have gets less, uh, and then eating something that is more digestible and easier to have. So again, I wouldn't necessarily have a big 
protein-based meal like an hour before. You want to have that kind of carb, protein, food and electrolytes kind of a, at least a few hours prior. Mm -hmm. And then as you get closer to race time, you're kind of dialing it back, just a little more carbs, food and electrolytes, because those are really, and we'll segue into the race, but carbs, fluid, and electrolytes are the kind of key three, or what I call the big three during the race and in the time immediately leading up to it. Let's do that. Let's jump into that race. You know, so we carb. Hopefully, we've looked at our training journal. So we have, we've looked at what we ate in the long runs. We know what that worked for us for dinners from the night, be two nights before, and now we had our, you know, breakfast at home, and then on the bus maybe a snack. So we're actually running the race now. Talk about nutrition. When are we taking? Obviously, look back at our, our training, but like when are we taking nutrition? What's the best way to take nutrition? Um, is there any advice we can give runners out there for race day nutrition? Like no. during, during the during race, the race. Yeah, during the race. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I think the key thing is ideally if you kind of know your fueling plan, you know, kind of how much carbs you're taking in, how much fluid, how much electrolytes, it's really trying to stick to the plan and then go based on how, how you feel. And I always tell people, even the best laid plans, you got to kind of also adjust it as you, as you go based on how you're feeling. Um, again, maybe you come out of the gates faster than you anticipated because, oh my gosh, it's, it's New York City Marathon, I, I feel awesome. Um, so again, usually you want to keep in mind if you're doing a higher pace, um, you know, you're going to be burning through that gas faster, uh, depending upon the temperature and the environment. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, about 55-ish um, Fahrenheit. Yeah. Which will be good um, compared to warmer times. So again, if you do end up for other races in a warmer environment, that'll be harder too. So again, I, I think it's really about trying to maintain good amounts of fluid, carbon electrolytes uh, throughout the race, whether it be through sports drink or something you're carrying. I will emphasize if you're doing things like goos or, or chews or things like that or gels um, that you are trying to pair that with some fluid. Some people with sensitive stomachs, if you just throw down a bunch of carbs, you know, without fluid, it can sometimes pull fluid into your gut um, and then sometimes give you some issues with having to go to the bathroom. So typically, uh, unless you know you can tolerate that well, I would definitely recommend if you're going to do a goo or a gel, have it um, with some water from a... Uh, aid station. Another thing to remember is if you also know if you're like a sensitive stomach type and you're, you, you know, you kind of know by the last third or quarter of the race, your, your stomach doesn't want to eat anything. Um, Been there. <laughs> I tell people, you know, the fuel you're taking in, it doesn't matter when you take it in. You just have to take it in. So I'll actually create a system where I'll have people eat more in the earlier mm. miles in the race even though you don't necessarily need it, but it's gonna be there waiting for you when you know you can't actually get it in later on because the blood flow is going away from your gut into your muscles. So to me, it's I think about, okay, you need this amount of fuel for the whole race. How do we distribute it in a way that you get it in, but in a way that also makes you feel okay? I like that, that's something I should focus on. Eat it more early on than normal. Uh, you mentioned something, I just want a clarification. You said take the, the gels, goose, with some liquids, and you mentioned water. Is could they also take it with Gatorade on the golf course, or is it only stick to water while we're out there with the gels and gels and goose? It's a good question, and again, a lot of it has to do with like the concentration of the mm -hmm. carbs in kind of like these foods that are more concentrated in carbs versus the fluid. So things like sports drinks are kind of created in a a balance that's supposed to kind of give you the right general ratios. Again, the right average ratios. Mm -hmm. For, for a person, so again, if you're taking it in with sports drink, it is going to dilute it, dilute it a bit, but again, you are also taking more carbs on top of it. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. you know, if you haven't done this before, if you haven't thought about this before, I would probably say start with water. Um, if you've tested it out with sports drink and it works for you, by all means do that. But again, if you're starting, if you haven't done it before, I would just, I would do more with water. Cool. And then, you know, how do I know on the course if I'm fueling the right amount? too much, not enough? How do I know out there? What do I feel like, you know, when I'm taking the proper amount? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really good question. And I think it's one you got to kind of be checking in with yourself and seeing how your performance is. Do you feel like you still have a little bit of a top gear? Do you feel like you're starting to lag a little bit? And, and is that lagging due to kind of a musculoskeletal thing where you're feeling like something's getting cranky or tired? Or is it just more of a general overall, like I'm just lagging because to me if it's something very specific to a muscle then that's one thing but if it's a general like i am feeling depleted that's a really good sign that you should be getting something in at the next uh aid station as soon as you can um because you don't want to fall behind because that's the hardest thing if you start falling behind and then you need to put more in and then you've been running a long time and now you don't have the blood flow to your gut anymore to digest or absorb 
it's going to be tough. And then especially if you end up in the bonk phase, like once you're bonking, it's, it's really nearly impossible to kind of get back to where you were. I always tell runners the reason you hit that wall, you know, for, for, there's a lot of reasons, but the two main ones I see are nutrition, poor nutrition, so you didn't eat properly, um, or you didn't drink properly, or you paced yourself, so you, you run out way too fast at a pace that mm -hmm. was, was too challenging early on, and, and you bank equals bonk, you know, so um, keep that nutrition in check, guys. I do want to, once again, if you have any questions for Jason today, guys, this is your opportunity before one of the biggest races you ran ever to ask your final race day nutrition questions to Jason. Uh, we have two right now setting up. Uh, let's toss one of them on the board here. Um, Richard asks, are, ba <laughs> are bagels and a waffle better for carbs? Can you eat too much? Talk about bagels and waffles before a race. Cool. So that's a great question. Um, I actually just want to quickly uh, jump to... Um, Oh shoot! We were just talking about the um, the race, the fueling. Oh, I completely bonking and we we'll hit the wall. And oh yes, and, yeah. yeah. So the intensity. Yeah. Um, if you do go out harder with more intensity, like let's say you're feeling fresh and good, and, and you feel like you wanted to try to maintain a higher pace, you need a higher fueling rate. Mm -hmm. In other words, so if you do want to attempt that. You gotta say, okay, if I was putting this amount of carbs, I gotta have more than that to maintain this higher pace mm. because I'm putting out more energy. So I just wanna emphasize that. So saying that you, if you want to, you can try, you just have to be mindful of getting more in. Now turning to the bagels uh, or waffles. Wait, do you have a preference? Bagels or waffles before like a long run or something? Do you have a preference which one you eat? Um, you know, sometimes it's just whatever is available. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I like that answer. Truthfully, um, you know, depending upon what it is, um, you know, if you have like a lower fat waffle, you're gonna probably have a somewhat kind of relatively even distribution. The waffles probably have a little more fat in them than the carbs. Um, also, you know, it's more dense. So you'd probably have to have, depending upon the size, like if you're having like a New York bagel, a New York bagel could be like two and a half, even three waffles. If I, I just had one for breakfast, it was huge. Yeah. yeah, so again, some of it is also just volume of understanding, okay, how many grams of carbs are in two waffles versus a bagel, uh, something like that. Um, also, what's tolerated? Some people like love bagels and they f they really enjoy them. Some people bagels feel heavy in them. Mm -hmm. um, some of it is so. So again, I, I would say both are fine options depending upon what you like and also what you're going to put on it. Because the toppings matters for syrup yeah. versus like a cream cheese butter, peanut butter. I'm sure one's help, one's better for racing. So the other. the other key thing is like neither of those have like the protein. Yeah. So like, where is the protein coming from for that? So again, you want to have it with like some eggs, a couple of eggs, if that sits well on you. Um, if you want to do some, some yogurt or something like that, if you want to do some nut butter, uh, I mean, you could put nut butter on either of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, my daughter loves uh, waffles <laughs> with peanut butter, so. Um, I haven't done that before. But only in a bagel and peanut butter. Yeah, yeah she'll eat anything with peanut butter. Oh, I, got, I like her, <laughs> that sounds great. Um, so, Good kid. So again, you know, I, I think there isn't uh, and then, can you eat too much? Yes. I mean, it's certainly possible if you just eat a ton, especially beyond what you're normally used to, and that stuffed feeling, like anytime you overeat. Like, if you feel like, oh my God, like, like you don't want to get Running into Running a mile risk. seems like, really hard at that point. Exactly. So my general um, guidance for people from a high level is you don't want to start a race starving or stuffed. Mm -hmm. You want to start feeling good, feeling energized, feeling like you're not hungry or peckish at all, but not feeling like, oh my gosh, what is in my stomach right now? I love that. I think we have another question coming in here. Let's pop it up on the screen. We have Fabian, will water and Gatorade be easily accessible at the start village or should I carry a lot of water? So Fabian, yes, there will be water and Gatorade at the start villages. Each uh, color will have its own amenities. So what's in yours, and they're the same. So what's in your orange is gonna be the same that's in green, so no need to wander around. Um, there'll be enough for all runners, and along the course, we'll have water and Gatorade at mile between miles three and twenty-five. So not the Verrazano Bridge, and not the final mile. Except this year, we are removing the water and Gatorade stations from mile five, seven, and nine. So look back at your training. So once again, if you're used to carrying a, a waste pack, um, and that's what you just feel comfortable having, bring that on the course. It's totally fine. Uh, but once again, we do have enough water out there for all. We have water for fifty thousand runners. Uh, we didn't bring that down. Um, with a lower uh, capacity runners. So we have enough raw water for you guys, um, but what you feel more comfortable with is, is ideal for, for, those, um, for that runner. Do you have a preference when you're out there running? Do you use coarse waters or bring in your own? 
I think, again, it's really going to be based off of what you're familiar yeah. and comfortable with. I mean, I'm lucky. I'm pretty, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with a lot of different things. I, my, my stomach is, is happy with anything, really. <laughs> and I recognize, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm in the minority with that word, just like I can take mm -hmm. whatever and be okay with it. And so, yeah, I think the main thing for you is saying, okay, also, like, if you knew, if you know, okay, Gatorade is going to be on the course, like, hopefully, you know, you test out the Gatorade ahead of time, saying, okay, did I try Gatorade as my thing if I want to have what's on the course versus carrying, because that's a decision you want to make. Like, am I going to carry? If I'm going to carry, how much do I need to carry? How am I getting my water? Where am I filling it? You know, mm -hmm. um, if I'm doing, like, a powder, then where am I going to mix it in? So, again, a lot of that has to do with, like, kind of the logistical considerations you're going to have based off what you want to be doing personally. And then uh, we have some more questions, but also along the course at mile 12 and 18, we also have a honey stinger gels, various flavors, caffeine, non-caffeine, so you can grab more than you need if you've practiced with that in your training. But change this year, we will not have bananas um, at the latter courses as you come back in Manhattan around mile 21, 22. No bananas this year, so if you need those, something you're used to that, maybe a family or friend, uh, hand those out to you along the course. Next question we have from Colleen. For dinner pre-race, is it best to eat late, later, or earlier? Suggestions others other than pasta? Okay, kind of two-parter here. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, I would definitely say, you know, you want to give yourself enough time to digest and not go to bed on a super full stomach. But then, I, you know, if you're going to be up till, let's say, 8, 9 o'clock, um, you know, ideally you're trying to get into bed relatively early given mm -hmm. your wake-up time. Um, you know, you still want to give yourself at least a couple of hours to digest a decent sized meal. Um, again, some people can eat a huge meal and just go right to bed and feel great, and a lot of people uh, don't. Um, so again, I would definitely say give yourself at least a couple hours, but at the same time, I wouldn't eat five hours before bed and then not eat anything for five hours um, either, because then you're going that whole amount of time without it. So give yourself at least generally a couple hours to digest. If you are feeling like you want to top yourself off, you know, like let's say you have dinner three hours before your intended bedtime and, you know, an hour before bed you're feeling a little peckish and you want to eat something, by all means have a small snack or something to top yourself off, but just enough to kind of make yourself feeling good um, and not feeling too full. Yeah, so as far as uh, carbs go, you know, you can really have any combination thereof. So you could have rice, you could have potatoes, sweet potatoes, you could do quinoa, farro, you know, really any, um, any grain that feels good for you. You can do oats, oatmeal, um, really anything that just is a good uh, carb or starch that's going to sit well in your stomach um, and energize you is totally fine. I'm assuming make sure those li things you listed off are things that we practiced in our, I love, you know, examples are great. Make sure you practice with that in your long runs. Uh, yeah. Brand. 100%. Yeah. So yeah, again, some of these things I'm mentioning are higher in fiber. Some of these are things or foods that maybe are not familiar to you. So again, nothing new on race day. Make sure it's food that you know are already familiar and well tolerated um, for yourself. And of course, also just, I mean, obviously things like breads, bagels, yeah. um, I kind of always on, it kind of glosses over me like an obvious, but I should mention it, waffles. <laughs> like you can do, you can do uh, breakfast for dinner if you want, if that's oh, something that, that you're in the mood for. Like you can, you don't have to stick to a, a typical dinner There's meal. No rule. There's no rule you gotta follow there. It's carbs, it's protein, it's fluid, it's electrolytes. I mean, you can get that combination. You could have breakfast twice <laughs> if you want, breakfast at night and breakfast next morning. Um, there's really no hard and fast rule as long as you're getting the actual nutrients in that you need. Cool. I've got another question coming in here. Let's see. We have one from Lisa. Thanks for writing, Lisa. I know a lot of people who can't. I know a lot of people who can't drink Gatorade. Why is that? And the other electrolytes. And our other. Why is that? The other electrolytes at all along the race. Our, our other along the course. So maybe talk about uh, why people maybe can't tolerate something like that. Oh, she's asking why is that the only electrolyte? I think why that's the only one along the course. Maybe yeah. Or are there other ones? So that is the only one along the course. Our uh, partner is Gatorade, so that's on the course. If you need something else. Definitely, you can. Uh, you kind of mentioned to bring your own powder mix um, or something in a water bottle. You have a different sport drink, um, so you can definitely uh, do that as well. But that's our, our, our partner along the course. Um, talk about maybe why some people may not tolerate that. Well, yeah, it's it's a good question. I mean, I think for a lot of it, it's just the blends, um, you know, of the the glucose fructose combinations, um, kind of what carbs are, are. Also, just what's familiar to a person what the concentration of the carbs are. So for some people, you know, Gatorade and other sports drinks are, are kind of made for kind of like an average 
kind of group of people based off what most people would do well with. And so, you know, not everybody's going to be in that kind of average group. And so, you know, if you find that that concentration just maybe doesn't work for you or that brand or product, then you can kind of create your own blend. Um, you can use different uh, products. Um, you can use different tablets to get yourself, because different ones exist at different kind of carbohydrate ratios. So if you look at some packets or tablets, some come with very little carbs, which again is less fuel, um, but maybe might still a little better in your stomach, but then you gotta get your fuel in from somewhere. Some can even be more carbohydrate dense than, than Gatorade. And then some people just have a personal preference or just feel like Gatorade, you know, they could have another brand and with the same concentration and feel totally fine. And it's just a personal response um, for what it is. So again, it's what feels best for you. And then just experimenting with that prior to race day. Love it, great question, Lisa. Coming in next, we have Sharon. What is your thoughts on energy jelly beans? Ooh, jelly beans. They are convenient to carry, but I'm concerned about the caffeine. Thoughts? Yeah, so caffeine is a, it's an interesting question because there is some research that shows for those who uh, can tolerate caffeine, caffeine can be helpful with kind of, you know, with the race, having as a part a little bit in the pre-race and then following it up with a little bit during. Um, there are amounts and ratios and things like that. Um, so I would say for those who feel like it gives them that boost, the way it generally is accepted that it works is that it reduces your perceived exertion. In other words, it makes the intensity that you're doing feel a little less hard. That's kind of the general effect of caffeine. Mm. Um, so what I'll say is for people who know that caffeine is something that they can use or drink or, or eat uh, with a jelly bean, then by all means go for it. Just be mindful of how much is in it. Most of these products don't have a ton of caffeine in it, even compared to a cup of coffee, as long as you're not downing like seven packages of it. A lot of these we usually have 50, you know, anywhere from like 40 to 100 milligrams of caffeine. Um, a cup What's of, a normal cup of coffee? Yeah. So a typical 12 ounce cup of coffee is going to probably be, you know, two to four times that, like okay. kind of, you know, anywhere from, and again, it depends on how strong it's brewed yeah. Yeah. and all that stuff, but usually anywhere from 150 to 250, 275. So, you know, it's not a huge amount, but if you've never had caffeine, and you're like, well, I want to try these energy jelly beans. <laughs> you know, I would say test it out beforehand. Yeah. As far as the, the jelly beans themselves, again, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity carver. It can be jelly beans, it can be gels, goos, chomps, fruit, dried fruit. Again, those things, if you know they sit well in your stomach, they're going to generally be higher fiber, so they're maybe a little harder to digest. But if they sit well in your stomach, go for it. But any combination of these things, fortunately, it's all good. Love it. Great question. Uh, next, we have Victoria. Do you advise taking the sports drink, which is Gatorade, at every aid station that has it or only when we feel like we need it? Now, I also want to put a water for this, like just hydration in general. Gatorade water, how do we know when to take it? When do we take it? Yeah, and so ideally, you kind of would have an idea of if you know your race pace and then how much you need to be taking in per hour, you can kind of judge that out a little bit. So you're saying, okay, if I'm doing a... An, nine minute mile mm -hmm. and so you're covering about um seven a little less than seven miles per hour um i'm doing the math right i think yeah i'm so proud we're good yeah yeah i'm okay um so you say okay well i need to take in 20 ounces of water per hour okay and you say okay and i have seven miles to cover that in that hour so you kind of say to myself okay well how many aid stations am i covering in those seven miles let's say i cross three of them um then you kind of got to say well i got to probably take in about six ounces mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. fluid. And so one little idea that I tell people is usually a gulp is about equal to one ounce. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of an easy little trick to have. So again, I think some of it is like planning out how many stations you are gonna be passing in the time you're doing it, especially if you're not carrying, and then getting that stuff in. Um, so you kind of say to yourself, well, if I'm gonna be having that and I'm getting all of my carbs or fuel from my fluid and I'm not taking in anything extra and that's what I need, then maybe you could just do the Gatorade at every station. If you know you're gonna be maybe supplementing with like a gel or other things, jelly beans, maybe at that station where you're having some of your jelly beans or having half your gel or something like that, then you'll take water with that because you're getting your carbs from somewhere else. I've heard two schools of thoughts on if you're, um, 
if you're feeling thirsty or too late, you've passed it. And so if you drink before you get, and as speaking of water specifically, if you're, or you drink before it, because um, if you got, if you're already thirsty, it's too late, mm -hmm. or that our body has our own mechanism to tell us when you're thirsty, which it tells you thirst. So how, how do, what's the thought on that? It's a, it's a tricky thing. Um, there are two schools of thought, and I would say I think a lot of it has to do with your own personal feeling and interpretation of how it goes. So generally there's this feeling that if you're already getting thirsty, you are a little bit behind the eight ball. So especially in like longer runs or races, being a little proactive can be helpful, mm -hmm. but also at the same, same time not force feeding yourself. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who are maybe trying to be too proactive will often in training runs get this phenomenon where they start to feel like sluggish or sloshy and that their stomach, that there's stuff in their stomach and sloshing around. And then clearly based off the amount you're taking in, that is too much. And so it's really that kind of happy medium of saying that you're taking in enough to feel like, okay, I'm not falling behind. But then let's say you take in a few gulps at a station. You're like, oh, I feel that fluid in me. And it's not going away. Then maybe you could dial it back at the next station if you're planning on taking in any station. So if your goal or your plan was like, I'm going to have four gulps at every station. And then you get to a station and you take the four gulps and you're like, oh, that's not going through my system you know, either dial back mm -hmm. at the next station or skip the station and then try the next and then say, okay, it's too high. So again, it's, if you think about it, it's like a tank. If the tank is overflowing, Not good. then let it come back down. But if the tank is getting low, you got to fill it back up. And like I said, you, if, if the tank is too low too much, then it's going to be really hard to build it back up. So Love it. We have a few more questions. Jason, let's do a speed round for these last ones. Um, we sure. have next one coming in from Bradford. I've had issues with severe stomach cramps, as much speed around as we can do with these. Yes. Um, issues with stomach cramps. Any nutrition recommended that can help to avoid that for Bradford here? Yeah, main things that lead to that is either you know, too much fat or fiber um, in the time prior to training, uh, or not training, the time prior to race. So again, if you're having a high fat or high fiber meal, um, during if you're getting dehydrated, so dehydration can lead to cramping as well. Um, also just checking your pace uh, if you're going out too hard too fast. Um, so I would say those are the main things, kind of being dehydrated, having something unfamiliar, too heavy, too high fiber, too high fat um, nutritionally. Good question, Brad, for good luck. We have Lisa that's saying, does fueling strategies differ for those of us who are six plus hour marathoners? It can. Um, actually, these are times where kind of the, the fluid intake, you, you may be not need to be as so like taking in a ton. Uh, there is some research that shows kind of like having a, a well, it is possible to kind of overhydrate sometimes in these circumstances. Um, so again, I wouldn't withhold fluid at, at any point, but I, you know, you don't have to feel like, oh my gosh, I need to have tons. Go by how you're feeling again. Uh, but I would say that's that's a key factor. And then just bearing in mind, if you're on a course for six hours, that six hours, you know, of not eating regular food. So you know, you might not need as much in a short period of time. You know, but you're still going to need it over the longer period of time. So don't neglect some level of fueling throughout the race as well because you're still going to need it. It's just spaced out longer. Good luck out there. And our last question for today, uh, Richard comes with a fun question at the end. How about pizza? Now, I'm assuming he means pre, let's talk about maybe pizza pre, pre? Pre, during, post, I mean, you know. <laughs> There's no you, time for, for not having pizza. If you want to grab, you want to grab a slice the of the course. Mile 18, you know, just the, uh, going. Um, you know, so again, I think the main thing is you're going to get the carbs from the, the dough. Um, you get a tiny amount of vegetable from the sauce. It's there. Uh, <laughs> you're going to get some, you're definitely going to get some protein from the cheese. Um, and you're also going to get some fat. So again, this can be a little bit heavier. Um, if it's a part of something you want to have in your pre-race uh, meal the night before, um, and it sits well in your stomach, and you feel good with it, and you maybe want to pair that with something else with a little bit of extra carbs, like a little bit of pasta, or have a little grilled chicken, or something like that, um, that's totally fine. Um, you know, afterwards, by all means. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, before we end here, as a Chicago, and I need to ask, does deep dish is deep dish okay as well, or only the New York style pizza? I mean, deep dish is just heavier. Yeah. I mean, if you've had a slice of deep dish, you know, you can put you can sometimes put away two slices of regular pizza. You have like one, one slice of deep dish. You're like roll me over. <laughs> um, so not morning so, of. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, again, I'm sure someone will come out of the work and be like, yeah, I do my deep dish and then I run and I run my best yeah, time yeah, yeah. and like it's fine, but. Yeah, I would say for the most part, things that you know make you feel super heavy, probably not the thing you're going to want to do the morning of. Love it. Great questions, guys. Thank you, Jason, yeah. so much for joining us. Of course. Um, and good luck to all of the runners. We'll be back for a course strategy at 12 o'clock today and as well at 6 p.m. 
Um, if you can't make those, look back at some old chats, but you can ask questions to the coaches there. But good luck at the 2021 TCS New York City Marathon, and we can't wait to see you at the finish line. Have a great race, everyone.